Hello dears, good morning all of you. Welcome to this session. Myself P. Sarojini Devi, KGBV School, Rambili, Vishakapatnam. Teacher in Biology. In our first lesson, I mean in biology, that is nutrition. In nutrition, now we are trying to discuss uh, what is nutrition, what are nutrients, what are the vitamins, what are the diseases we are facing, what is the modes of nutrition, what are the types, uh, various organisms are uh, performing what more what more they are performing in their nutrition all those are we are discussing here nutrition 10th class now what is nutrition nutrition means procurement of nutrients is called nutrition we know very well in what type we are uh, accumulating uh, nut various nutrients from various sources this process is called as nutrition we know very well what are the nutrients are present in our food what we are taking every day we already learnt in seventh class we know the various types of nutrients carbohydrates proteins fats minerals and vitamins here there is a question what what is the purpose of taking food why we are taking food every day that means the purpose of taking food is food is need to all the organisms for their growth and repair and it helps to maintain our body temperature also observe this picture here here we know the examples of carbohydrates proteins and lipids fats etc uh, for example uh, carbohydrates are present in uh, rice items and then wheat here in this picture bread oats are seems to arise these are the examples for carbohydrates and in the same way observe the picture of proteins in this milk eggs cheese beans fish and meat and dry fruits also having the nutrients of proteins and the next one which are we are intaking uh, oily food in our daily life those are called as lipids or fats observe this one what are the objects are here what are the items are seems to your eyes yes you are right here corn capsicum strawberry uh, grapes and then cabbage various both fruits and vegetables are here tomatoes and apples are also there here this picture is a very good example for getting nu nutrients as vitamins and minerals this means we are getting vitamins and minerals far from fruits and vegetables now we are going to discuss about modes of nutrition how many types of nutrition is there here 
two types of nutrition is there one is autotrophic nutrition and other one is heterotrophic nutrition here if we are going to observe the meaning of auto means self trophic means feeding so here in this autotrophic nutrition organisms are making their food for their their self only those organisms are called as autotrophs examples are plants and next mode of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition in this heterotrophic nutrition these organisms are not having the capability of making their food for their own those organisms are called as simply animals here in heterotrophic nutrition obtaining organic nutrients by feeding on other living things here just observe autotrophic nutrition some of the pictures are seen to you carbon dioxide chlorophyll water and sunlight by the using of these four factors plants are making their food for their own this type of nutrition is called as autotrophic nutrition if we are going to discuss about heterotrophic nutrition here also some types are there one is saprophytic nutrition and other one is parasitic nutrition and next holozoic nutrition we know very well saprophytic nutrition means these organisms are depending on the dead and decay materials for their food those are called as saprophytes example of saprophyte is mushrooms and bread molds simply we are calling it as fungi and next one parasitic nutrition these are these organisms are depending other organisms for their food those are called as parasites example of parasites are uh, the plant name is cascuta and if you are going to discuss in animals is uh, lice etc and next one is holozoic nutrition in holozoic nutrition here the food is intaking through our mouth and breakdown of uh, various food materials are going on <coughs> and for this holozoic nutrition example is human being various animals i mean elephant lion pictures seen to you for better understanding next one if we are going to discuss about what are the differences in between both autotrophs and heterotrophs we know very well in autotrophs they have the capability of preparing their food for their own if we are discussing heterotrophs they which can't prepare their food by their own are called heterotrophs and then if we are going to discuss about uh, examples of autotrophs and heterotrophs green plants and photo photosynthetic bacteria is a example for autotrophs and fungi and animals are example for heterotrophs we know very well here Uh, for making of food chloroplasts are other reason i mean by the having of these chloroplasts they have the capability to make their food for their own by the having of these chloroplasts they can make their food that's why they are called as autotrophs in heterotrophs chloroplasts are absent that's why they can't make their food for their own in autotrophs 
photosynthesis occurs in heterotrophs due to the absence of chloroplasts there is no photosynthesis next one if we are going to discuss about photosynthesis what is the meaning of photosynthesis photo means light synthesis means making by the using of sunlight here organisms are making their food that's why this process of making food is called as photosynthesis here carbohydrates are synthesized chloroplasts which are present in the green plants from co2 and water in the presence of sunlight this photochemical reaction is called as photosynthesis here there is a equation 6 co2 plus 12 h2o in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll gives rise to C6H12O6 plus 6H2O plus 6O2. <clears throat> Here, carbon dioxide, water, sunlight and chlorophyll are the four factors for making of food and the end products of this photosynthesis, glucose, water and oxygen. See this picture here clearly light carbon dioxide oxygen water four factors they are using simply they are making their food in the form of carbohydrates <coughs> here there is a video in that video simply photosynthesis is explained to you funnily by the using of uh, cartoons uh, for you uh, let's enjoy by watching this uh, cartoon video hello dear students how are you do you know what is photosynthesis photosynthesis is a process of making food for their self we know that among all life processes, the process of photosynthesis makes plants the universal food provider for all living organisms. Four factors are necessary for photosynthesis. If you observe here, water is there. If you observe here, the next factor is sunlight. What is this picture? Yes. You are right. It is leaf. In this leaf, there is a pigment. The name of the pigment is chlorophyll. This factor is also very important for the process of photosynthesis in plants. Let us observe on the screen what it is showing. CO2. Yes, you are right. CO2 means it is carbon dioxide. This factor is also very useful for the process of photosynthesis in plants. See this picture. Here, light energy, carbon dioxide and chloroplast and minerals in water. Four factors are plant is utilizing. By the utilization of these factors, it is producing food for all the universe. The process of photosynthesis is very complex. Scientists had tried to formulate a simple equation for photosynthesis over past 200 years. Formula is proposed by C.B. Van Neel in the year of 1931. Let us read the photosynthesis equation. CO2 plus H2O sunlight chlorophyll gives rise to C6H12O6 plus O2. Here CO2 in the sense carbon dioxide, H2O means water and then sunlight and chlorophyll. All those four are factors for utilizing in the process of photosynthesis. By the using of these four, plants make food for their own. Food means here, glucose, the formula of glucose is C6H12O6. 
and then it releases oxygen also hello dears have you understood this topic yes thank you i thought uh, you enjoyed something <clears throat> for the understanding of uh, this concept very well observe this one in this lesson uh, if you are discussing mainly two activities are there one is hydrolyzed experiment observe this experiment <clears throat> first of all when we want to explain or when we want to read something for our activity we have to write in a order first we have to write what is the aim of that experiment what are the requirements are uh, we have to arrange for that experiment and next procedure and then observation and next inference finally we are what precautions we are taking uh, we have to mention there and final one is conclusion these are the steps we have to follow when we are going to do an experiment when we are going to write an experiment so first what is the aim of this hydrilla experiment <clears throat> here we are trying to prove the releasing of oxygen is present in this hydrilla experiment here the releasing of oxygen we have to prove here for this experiment what are the requirements we have observe this one a big beaker is there there is a test tube water is filled in that beaker and funnel is there here glass funnel is there a water plant hydrilla is there here we can use either hydrilla plant or elodia plant and then first of all if we are going to discuss about a procedure we have to take a beaker pour 3/4 of water and take a hydrilla plant and try to uh, cut into a small pieces means twigs we have to arrange those twigs into the glass funnel arrangement is when the arrangement is over the glass funnel is inverted into the beaker and then at the top of the funnel we have to invert a test tube which is having some water observe this picture as it is we have to arrange uh, those requirements in this picture what we are uh, seems this arrangement is we have to keep under the sunlight after 3 or 4 hours we have to observe that experiment if we observe after 3 or 4 hours water bubbles are comes out in the test tube when the enough water bubbles are accumulated in that test tube we can remove that test tube without leakage of water after that one we have to test with a incense stick or a match stick by the lighting of that stick and keep that lighting stick at the top of the test tube when we are placing 
third matchstick it is trying to get more uh, it gives more lightening and more burnt so what is the meaning of that one oxygen is here releasing that's why here observation is like that here proved oxygen is liberated in this hydrilla experiment and next the second activity is moles half leaf experiment this experiment is also having same step as before experiment what is the aim of this experiment the necessity of carbon dioxide in the process of photosynthesis we have to prove that if we want to prove one thing what we have to do we have to try to make the absence of that substance then only we can get result uh, perfectly here first of all we have to discharge the plant means we have to keep that plant uh, uh, in dark place uh, five to six hours then all the starch which is having already that is uh, uh, expen uh, expended uh, for their uh, biological activities after that we have to take a potted plant observe this one if we are going to talk about requirements one potted plant wide mouth bottle koh solution here we we have to arrange if we are observing plant we have to uh, select one wide uh, wide ranged uh, leaf we have to insert that leaf into the bottle before that insertion of leaf we have to pour some of the koh solution or pellets koh means potassium hydroxide after pouring this koh solution after inserting of this leaf we have to make it uh, uh, i mean make it close uh, with tight cap and uh, by the applying of uh, grease or vaseline something we have to keep this one under the sunlight here what we are doing here this koh solution what we are using in this bottle it is grasping carbon dioxide which is present in the bottle that means in this experiment we are not giving the carbon dioxide to the plant that means here in the four factors here we are missing one factor after some time if we are getting that leaf from that plant if we are observing that leaf by the adding some drops of iodine what is the outside leaf is present that makes uh, food for their own that's only it it is changing its color as blue black if we are observing what is the leaf part which is present in bottle that is having no color change that means there is no starch that's why it is not changing its color it's not color it's not changing its color means there is no starch there is no process of photosynthesis these are the two activities are very important for this lesson next where this photosynthesis takes place in a plant if we are going to observe that one in leaves 
photosynthesis occurs here transverse section of leaf is there here there is a upper and lower layers are there those layers are called as a cuticles here a single layer of cells are arranging one by one that is called as upper epidermis which is having lower that is called as a lower epidermis in between these epidermises there are two main tissues are there one is palisade parenchyma and other one is spongy parenchyma palisade parenchyma tissue is arranging one by one in order manner if we observing spongy parenchyma these are uh, scattering uh, just linking uh, one cell to another there is a uh, gaps are there in between these two tissues there is a vascular bundles are there these vascular bundles having two tissues xylem and phloem xylem is useful for the transportation of water in plants and phloem is useful for transportation of food from one part to another part of plant and then what are the gases exchange takes place here that place is called as that part is called as stomata here stomata is present uh, stomatal pore is there through this uh, stomatal pore it is taking uh, carbon dioxide and next in leaf in what organism i mean in which organism this photosynthesis takes place what is this picture it is a cell organelle which is mainly present in plant this is called as chloroplast it is a uh, it is having a green color pigments that uh, green color pigment is called as chlorophyll if we are observing this cell organelle uh, outer membrane and inner membrane is there in this in between these membranes intermembrane space is there here stacked like structures are present they are called as granum or grana thylakoids and then remaining part of uh, uh, the center one is called as stroma both grana and stroma are involved in the process of photosynthesis this stroma is filled with aqueous fluid this grana and stroma is interlinked with the with these lamella if we uh, if we uh, count the number of those chloroplasts in each cell 40 to 6 40 to 100 number of chloroplasts are present in cells next what is the difference in between chloroplast and chlorophyll already we know very well it is a cell organelle chlorophyll is a pigment chloroplast is uh, having a green color due to the presence of chlorophyll chlorophyll is reflects the green light of sunlight uh, chloroplast is responsible for photosynthesis and then chlorophyll is responsible for tapping the light for photosynthesis the entire process of photosynthesis occurs in chloroplast the process of photosynthesis starts with the help of chlorophyll these are the main difference differences uh, for chloroplast and chlorophyll and next if you are going to observe process of photosynthesis in this process two major phases are there in these phases one is called as light reaction or photochemical reactions and next one is dark reactions or light independent reactions if you are going to discuss uh, light reaction 
some reactions of photosynthesis that occurs only in the presence of light is called as light reaction in the heading there is a meaning in this light reaction uh, assimilatory powers are formed that is atp and nadph so this phase is called as technically photochemical phase this light reaction takes place in the part of grana in chloroplast it is having uh, several steps and next what are the steps are present in this uh, light reaction absorption of photons this absorption of photons this reaction is done in chloroplasts next one is photolysis of water or hill reaction here in the presence of light water molecule is undergoes to the lysis and divides into h plus plus oh minus ions and third one is ions of water undergoes quick changes very quick changes and next one next phase is dark reaction or kelvin cycle this dark reaction is discovered by kelvin that's why this reaction is called as kelvin cycle it is light independent phase means it is uh, dark reaction means it is not takes place at the time of dark or at the time of night this dark reaction means there is no need of light for this dark reaction phase this dark reaction takes place in the part of uh, in the uh, in the part of uh, stroma of uh, chloroplast in this reaction carbon dioxide converts into glucose in this reaction atp and nadph those are called as assimilatory powers are used which are producing in light phase here rubp means ribulose bisphosphate and some of the enzymes are involved in this uh, uh, series of uh, actions finally glucose converts into starch observe this uh, picture once light reaction here taking water in this water from i mean from this water uh, here o2 is releasing atp nadph uh, hs uh, i mean uh, uh, assimilatory powers are formed in light reaction which are enters into the dark phase i mean uh, kelvin cycle by the using of carbon dioxide they are making finally sugars means starch here photosynthesis having uh, already we discussed light reaction and dark reactions here simply uh, we are denoting as a flow chart here oxidation of chlorophyll photolysis of water uh, photophosphorylation three steps taken uh, three steps are uh, takes place in light reaction and in dark reaction here uh, carbon dioxide is uh, um, added to ribulose uh, enzyme and those are formed hexo sugar and this hexo sugar is uh, uh, is a unstable product and it is formed pza means a phosphoglyceric acid this phosphoglyceric acid again converts into the glucose finally if you are going to discuss about uh, the differences uh, in between light reaction and dark reactions we know very well it is the first phase and dark reaction is the second phase it occurs in the grana and dark phase occurs in the stroma and this reaction is only in the presence of light this uh, i mean it is present in the absence of light i mean there is no need of light chlorophyll plays a key role in light reactions here rubp plays a key role in dark reactions light energy converted into chemical energy here in dark reactions co2 converted into glucose next one we are here discussing modes of uh, nutrition already up to this one just we are discussing uh, in what way photosynthesis i mean mechanism mechanism of photosynthesis 
uh, which is takes place in uh, various organisms uh, in what phases uh, these are uh, uh, i mean in the form of uh, various uh, uh, steps that all those is called uh, as under the autotrophic nutrition but now we are discussing here what i mean in what mode uh, nutrition occurs in um, single celled organisms first picture what is that organism um, have you got an idea yes it is uh, amoeba amoeba is taking food particle by the using of their pseudopodia means through their body surface it is taking food into their body so it is the mode of nutrition in amoeba if we are going to discuss uh, in paramecium there is a groove like structure that is called a cytostome through this cytostome it is taking food into their cell next importance of photosynthesis already we know very well from the lower classes this photosynthesis is giving food for all the organisms and it is giving oxygen to all the organisms which are present on the earth and it is the only energy source in the world and then human digestive system the next topic is i mean what mode of nutrition is present in human beings already we uh, discussed holozoic mode of nutrition is present in human beings here five steps are there ingestion digestion absorption assimilation and defecation or ingestion ingestion means uh, taking food digestion we know very well the uh, complex food materials are breaking down into simple food molecules that is called as a digestion absorption means which is having a digested food in our body they are uh, taking some of the nutrients of uh, i mean minerals from that uh, uh, material and assimilation means assimilation of various nutrients uh, and reaching to our blood uh, which is having in various cells and last one is a uh, defecation or ingestion means uh, what we are having uh, undigested food material that is gone through uh, outside through our anus next one after this one we are taking food through our mouth tongue is helping and esophagus is there through this esophagus and next food is reached to stomach and then duodenum is there after that one large intestine i mean uh, first it enters into the small intestine after this one it goes to enter into the large intestine finally goes to the rectum and excretion is done through the anus see this one in our digestive process we are having many of the enzymes tyalin i mean it is present in our saliva pepsin bile juice amylase trypsin lipase peptidase sucrase all those are called as enzymes when the name is having age is called as enzyme here tyalin is secreted by salivary glands and uh, it is secreting uh, saliva uh, it acts on carbohydrates and product is maltose and next one is pepsin secreted by gastric glands secreted into stomach here it is uh, uh, i mean it's a digestive juice is gastric juice i mean this pepsin enzyme is present in this gastric juice it acts on proteins simply it forms a peptones and next one is a bile here in this bile juice there are no enzymes secreted by liver secreted into duodenum and digestive juice is bile juice and it acts on simply fats emulsification process is going 
it means breaking down of large fats into small globules and the next one is amylase this amylase uh, is secreted by pancreas and uh, secreted into duodenum uh, digestive juice is pancreatic juice acts on uh, carbohydrates and product is final product is maltose trypsin and uh, secreted by pancreas and here secreted into duodenum uh, it is also uh, having uh, digestive juices uh, as a as uh, amylase called as pancreatic juice acts on proteins and gives the product is peptones and next one is the lipase uh, secreted by pancreas and um, secreted into duodenum digestive juice is a pancreatic juice here uh, acts on fats gives the fatty acids and glycerols and next one next both are uh, peptidases and sucrases are uh, uh, secreted by intestinal glands and secreted into both are secreted into small intestines and both are having uh, intestinal juices i mean presence of uh, these both uh, enzymes are in intestinal juices peptidases acts on peptides and sucrase acts on sucrose the final products are amino acids and glucose these uh, enzymes are plays a very important role in our digestive system raphases uh, we learnt in class 7 raphases means simply fibers these are either carbohydrates or proteins these are helps in easy movement of food materials in elementary canal uh, and prevents constipation also there are very rich in uh, vegetables and fruits Uh, we have to take uh, these raphases uh, in our daily uh, menu uh, these are very helpful uh, and getting healthy nature also next one is malnutrition what is malnutrition here lack of uh, one or two nutrients types in our nutrition that is uh, uh that is uh, causing uh, various diseases that is called as malnutrition here three types of malnutrition are there one is calorie malnutrition second one is protein malnutrition and third one is protein calorie malnutrition if we are going to discuss about uh, causes of malnutrition poor health will suffer starvation uh, lack of awareness in nutritional habits poor socio economic factors all those are uh, causes for malnutrition so we have to take care we have to take a uh, good nutrient food we have to take care about our health and child health also here if you are going to first malnutrition disease is kwashiorkor observe this picture what are the diagnostic features are seen through your eyes mainly body part becomes swollen due to the water accumulation in our cellular spaces swollen legs and fluffy face is there where they are facing difficulties to eat uh, they are having diarrhea dry skin these are the symptoms in kwashiorkor diseases due to i mean this mainly this disease is due to the protein deficiency next one is marasmus this marasmus disease is due to protein and calorie deficiency uh, see this picture what are the diagnostic features are uh, present in this picture uh, belongs to this marasmus disease lean and weak swollen limbs are there less developed muscles and uh, uh, if, if you observe this guy uh, having dry skin and less developed muscles swollen limbs very weak and lean structure he is having and diarrhea is also uh, main symptom of this disease next one is obesity in this obesity uh main causes are, causes are for this one 
ओवर हीटिंग एंड एक्सेस ऑफ एनर्जी इनटेक इज मेन कॉज फॉर दिस गेटिंग ऑफ ओबेसिटी डिसीज इट इज अ बिग हेल्थ हजार लीड्स टू डायबिटीज कार्डियोवेसिकुलर रीनल एंड गार्ल ब्लेडर प्रॉब्लम्स एट्सेट्रा ओनली वे टू ट्रीट दिस इज टू इंक्रीज एनर्जी एक्सपेंडिचर एंड रेड्यूस हाई एनर्जी इनटेक and next one is here see this one vitamins are there we know very well uh, a vitamin b vitamin c d uh, k uh, some of the vitamins we know if we observe this uh, tabular form two types of vitamins are there water soluble vitamins and then fat soluble vitamins vitamin b and c are called as water soluble vitamins and then a d e k these vitamins are called as fat soluble vitamins here some of the chemical names are also there uh, thymine uh, this chemical name is for b1 vitamin resources of b1 is cereals oils seeds vegetables milk meat fish eggs etc if we are uh, lack of this vitamin if we are uh, having any deficiency of uh, vitamin b1 we are getting uh, um, very very disease here uh, symptoms are also giving vomiting and loss of appetite difficulty to breathe paralysis uh, we are facing and next one is next vitamin is b2 riboflavin present in milk eggs liver kidney green leafy vegetables and deficiency disease is glossitis mouth cracks uh, at corners and uh, sore tongue uh, this is the main uh, symptoms next b3 chemical name of b3 is niacin the resources of this b3 is kidney liver meat egg fish oil seeds etc deficiency disease of b3 is pellagra and symptoms are Uh, dermatitis diarrhea and loss of memory scaly skin scaly skin in the sense uh, the skin is appearing is uh, appearing as uh, dry and next vitamin is b12 cyanocobalamin synthesized by bacteria present in our intestine uh, it is causing pernicious anemia symptoms are lean weak and uh, having less appetite and next cyanocobalamin cyanocobalamin means uh, the formula of uh, this vitamin is b12 sorry uh, it is over next one is pyridoxin pyridoxin means b6 it is present in cereals oil seeds vegetables milk meat fish eggs liver etc it is causing uh, anemia uh, symptoms are hyper irritability Uh, vomiting fits nausea etc and next one is folic acid liver meat eggs milk fruits cereals leafy vegetables etc are the resources for this one and it is also causing anemia uh, having same symptoms uh, diarrhea loss of uh, leukocytes in intestinal uh, mucus problems means uh, we are getting uh, digestive uh, uh, barriers also next one is pantothenic acid it is uh, i mean this vitamin is rich in sweet potatoes ground nuts vegetables liver kidney egg etc the deficiency disease is burning feet uh, we are facing uh, i mean we are getting face uh, walking problems sprain etc next one is biotin this biotin uh, resources uh present in i mean uh, pulses uh, nuts vegetables liver milk kidney etc deficiency diseases are nerves nerve disorders mental depression muscle pains are the symptoms for this disease all those what we are discussing here b1 b2 b3 b6 b12 folic acid and pantothenic acid bite in all those are comes under the b complex vitamin this is the one of the water soluble vitamin and the next one is vitamin c 
that is called as ascorbic acid present in green leafy vegetables citrus fruits sprouts etc uh, deficiency disease is scurvy and symptoms are delay in uh, healing of wounds uh, i mean getting late uh, healing of wounds uh, fractures of bones etc next one is b c r water soluble uh, water soluble vitamins are over now we are going to discuss about uh, vitamin a means fat soluble vitamin uh, vitamin a uh, we know very well uh, it is uh, i mean resources are uh, leafy vegetables carrot tomato pumpkin papaya mango mint uh, cod liver oil shark liver oil etc uh, if we having any deficiency of this uh, vitamin a we are uh, getting eye and skin diseases night blindness and uh, xerophthalmia uh, xerophthalmia means that uh, we are if the deficiency of this vitamin a uh, we can get um, uh, dry eyes if we are getting dry eyes uh, we are facing uh, too many problems uh, i mean in our sight etc next one is calciferol vitamin d present in liver egg butter and cod liver oil shark liver oil etc deficiency disease is rickets Uh, symptoms of uh, rickets is improper uh, formation of bones and knock knees uh, delayed dentition weak bones etc and next vitamin is tocopherol vitamin e present in uh, fruits vegetables sprouts meat egg samsara oil uh, causing fertility disorders and symptoms are sterility in males abortion in females this is very very important uh, vitamin uh, in reproduction for getting uh, uh, next generation it is very helping last one is vitamin k philoquinone green leafy vegetables milk these are the sources of vitamin k deficiency disease of with this vitamin k is blood clotting symptoms of this one is delay in blood clotting over bleeding etc this is the tabular form of uh, Uh, both uh, water soluble and fat soluble vitamins and their resources uh, deficiency diseases and symptoms also it is very very important uh, question in this chapter here already we know some of the resources of vitamin e is there here uh, resource of uh, vitamin k is there observe these pictures vitamin b vitamin a vitamin c and vitamin d is there and then uh, in what uh, we are all those vitamins are getting uh, meat uh, uh, nuts raspberries strawberries cheese mushrooms uh, carrots chicken all those are from these food items good food habits take balanced diet do not overeat keep refreshes in our in your diet drink plenty of water say no to junk food uh, don't eat uh, much junk food please keep avoid that uh, junk food uh, it is not good for our health take vegetables leafy vegetables milk eggs etc we have to masticate the food uh, thoroughly before swallowing these are the good food habits after the learning of uh, Uh, this chapter finally uh, we have to follow these good food habits here there is a link for uh, funny game uh, i i want to give this link to your uh, youtube video in i mean in description you can touch this uh, link and play the game i mean match and pair uh, of uh, vitamins i gave in this game uh, various vitamins and their chemical names you have to match up thank you thank you for the listening of uh, this session uh, i thought um, everything you can understand uh, i think uh, i have said so far uh, what up to now Uh, next one is um, uh, let us meet uh, in our next session uh, dear students stay tuned to 
this KZBV's online Vishakapatnam YouTube channel. Please like, share and subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.